getting this far. Uh, and it may look complicated in here, but really it isn't. It's quite methodical, actually. So we will open it up and bring it a bit closer so you can see. That's better with a bit more light, I think. Okay, so this is the SMC. And here I have the variable control for the spindle. And if I just pull this wire out here, I've just stuffed in here. Um, now here, now I've taken out the bridge that was on the power supply. If I can turn that a little bit. There's a bridge here um, that you can take out and put a switch on so you can switch this unit on and off. Okay, which is what I want. I didn't want to rely on the um, variable control or rheostat to, you know, totally switch it off. I wanted to totally isolate the spindle, switch it off. So that's what I've done there. I advise you to do the same. Um, these three here. Oh, mark every wire if you can. And I'm going to show you in a minute what to do if you have a, a wire that's not marked and goes into a bundle like that. I'll show you what to do. So X, Y and Z there. This is coming from the limit switches, which are not fitted yet. So I'm just going to poke those out through there, out of the way. Because they're not going to be connected up for a while. Um, this big fat lead here, that one is going to, let me see, uh, this large connector back up here, that the, supplies the spindle. I've also, also got an earth lead, there, that green one, uh, that is going to be supplying an earth to the actual CNC rotor itself. Uh, and of course, this earth is going to the chassis of this metal box. Uh, so everything is earthed. Um, what else have we got? Okay, so I'll just go through these leaves here. And look, I've left them quite long because I want to be able to open the door right out. So they have to be able to go out there. So. You know, when they're attached, they're going to be bundled up and zip tied like this, and there will be a like a an area here. Uh, so when you close the door, it folds in like so, and uh, doesn't uh, hurt. Okay, this little blue lead here. Okay, this is spliced at this point into four other leads, it's soldered and taped with insulation tape and then that supplies 5 volts to each of the drivers and this gets connected up to the 5 volt supply on the, the back of the SMC um, this cable here uh, this is the 12 volt from this DC converter here, power supply. This is going to supply the 12 volt to the SMC, but what I'm going to do is split this like this, okay? So this is the positive, this is the negative. Negative goes straight into here. Positive is going to go onto one side of this switch and I'm going to put a lead then from the other side of the switch up into the 12 volt supply here. So I have another isolating system. This time it's on the 12 volt circuit. So I can switch this off if I wish. Okay, um, so that's those. So you see it's not really complex. It's quite methodical really, <laughs> honestly. 
Um, now these three, these three are the signal, okay, pull and directional, pulse and direction, okay, for the X, Y and Z, all right. Now, I know I have four drivers, but two drivers are going to operate together because I have a, a left and a right or should I say I have a Y axis and a Y slave axis okay now they are at the bottom here so what I've done with this I supply one, one of these supplies one of these drivers and I've looped over and supplied the other one as well so they get an identical signal okay now this is a homebrew little CNC router okay it is not an industrial machine it's not going to be used as an industrial machine and I am I, I know through personal experience whatever work I put it through it's not going to lose a step on you know very very rarely will it lose a step on the two Y drives uh, so what I will be doing is every time I start a new job or fire the machine up I will be asking the SMC home home the, 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 the unit which will put it the the spindle top of the stroke in Z far over to the left as you're looking at the machine and as far forward as it'll go so when it has done that and registered the machine home I can then quickly just put a rule okay or a vernier on the slave axis and just measure exactly where it is compare it with the other side and I'll know within 10th hour whether they are absolutely parallel or not if they're not it's a very very simple um, solution to level them up okay and I'll show you that when the time comes okay I'm going to show you what to do now if like I in this case I really don't have a clue which one of these three wires goes to which driver so with your little multi multimeter just uh, come down here select 200 ohms is fine so it's an open circuit at the moment and I think you can see that registering yeah you can so if you notice it goes to zero closed circuit open circuit okay closed circuit open circuit so what we're going to do is signal signal there's signal right I'm going to have to have three pairs of hands to do this, I think. How easy can I do this? I'm going to take this long one. I'm going to stick it in there. If I can hold that. Just watch the meter. So this is... Oh, right first time block. Okay, put it on this one over here. Nothing. This one. So I know that this lead is connected to this one. So we'll mark that one. And that's the Z axis. Because I've actually got uh, Z, X, Y, and Y slave written on the underside
and label it so now we know exactly what that one is and I'll do the rest of these and I'll come back to you in a minute okay so this is the loop wire from the switch to the positive which is here This is the positive feed. It goes on the top one. And this is the negative or ground. So, you know, I've, I've connected everything up here. I've got the limit switches connected here. I've got the positive negative feed coming in here to feed the um, SMC. I've got uh, the earth, which is the green one there. The little blue one here, that's the one that feeds the, all the drivers with the 5 volt. And I've got um, X, X, Y and Z. Um, connected into the controller and I've actually got I've only got three coming out because I've got the Y and the Y slave connected up together here so I've got one feed on the Y circuit coming out of the controller feeding the two with a step and direction which is fine I have used that before, no real problems. Um, I'm only operating uh, three limit switches, one on the Z, one on the one on the Y, and one on the X. Um, although I'm running two stepper motors and drive systems on the Y. Um, what I what works for me anyway guys this is not an industrial machine it's a, a little bit more than a hobby machine then um, is you home the machine and then when you've homed the machine all you do regarding the the Y is just take a measurement of the slave uh, Y axis and um, make sure that that's you know exactly the same as the you know the other side uh, and if it's not you just um, you know sort of compensate for that to bring it up in line not very often you have to do that at all because it just doesn't leave, you know lose steps okay so time to switch it on I suppose I am. I have got a switch here, actually, to switch uh, switch the SMC on and off. I haven't got it connected up yet because I wanted to make sure everything works. All blue lights on here. Green light there. Green light. Light up on there. Everything should be. Everything should be up. There you go. 